follow up got tool six in the spindle so if I advance to tool seven you'll see it change tools spindle picks it up drops the part off go to the next tool I've put those tools in so far and everything seems to be just perfect um, so far it has done everything I wanted it to do so if I go back to tool six picks it right up beautiful that's exactly what I was hoping for I didn't even have to recalibrate it everything's in the right place so I think my problem is solved so again there's some other things I'm gonna do I'm gonna end up taking it back out and redoing a few other things eventually but right now I'm pretty happy so let's see tool one forward There it is. Works like a dream. So, um, one of the things I'd like to ask someone is, <clears throat> is it okay to leave this loaded? Uh, I don't use my machine all the time. And I'm just curious, does the weight of these tools on this thing eventually bend it down? I don't think it would. I don't see why that would be a problem. Uh, especially this one is thicker uh, the way it's made. I think it would be a better design in the long term, but I, I wonder if me leaving these tools in here can have a uh, negative effect. One of the things I've been told is you'll get rust here. Um, I keep my building air conditioned and heated year round, so that doesn't seem to happen to my tools. <clears throat> but that's one thing I've been told that they'll develop surface rust over time uh, but you know that's not happened to me so far um, but normally that's what I keep in it uh, it's you know what roughly 20 tools but a few less um, I try to keep three or four pockets open for anything else that I may need but this is kind of the conglomeration of tooling that I use on a fairly regular basis I am going to get rid of this one that's a high-speed steel. Uh, I'm pretty much going all carbide for everything from here on out, I think. Uh, with this machine, it's a belt-driven spindle. Uh, so it has no low-end torque at all. Um, it just, if you put a, if you need to turn something slow, it does not work well. Uh, what I'm finding is with this thing, you need to turn your tool fast and you don't want big tools like this. So um, instead of milling steel with something like this, I'll be milling it with uh, that's aluminum, something more like that. Um, so smaller diameter, uh, spinning faster with it being carbide. So you know something like that. And I don't know how much bigger I'll go than than this. I don't think I will. Um, yeah, there's one for steel. Uh, I've really not milled any steel with this machine much at all. Uh, and it was pretty horrible when I did it. Uh, partly because all I had that was really useful for steel was high speed steel. All of my carbide end mills were all three flute made for, um, aluminum. And I use... Uh, I use this, this, and this probably more than any other. Uh, these are my three most used tools, um, followed by, uh, you know, just your different drills and stuff. But I, I do use this engraving bit some, and this chamfer tool. I use this quite a bit for facing, and this thing is really about probably more than this machine likes. Uh, this is a little bit too big of a face mill. Uh, I need to find inserts for this. 
Yeah, as you can see, these are kind of chowdered up pretty good. So I want to find some replacement inserts for this uh, because this is a little bit more of this machine speed. It works a little bit better. Um, but I got this and this back when Haas first started selling tooling for like 120 bucks for that whole setup, including the inserts. It was really hard to pass this up. This is the first one I ordered, and you can see it's really long. I have no idea. This is all that I could find that they had. I ordered this one first, and then I ordered this one when they came back in stock. So I got both of these. I really only ever use this one. I never use this tool. Uh, I just, honestly, I'd sell it at this point if somebody wanted it. Um, but anyway... I keep getting sidetracked. I run rabbits all the time. But uh, if somebody knows, is it bad to leave tools in the tool changer? Um, you know, semi-permanently. I basically keep the same tools in there all the time. I use them all. 99% of the time I use these tools to do most of what I do. Usually I just do basic stuff, so those work pretty well. And then I just keep like four or five pockets open that, you know, if I want to do something different than like 15 through 20 is my sort of specialty uh, things. But 2 through 15 or 2 through 14 are my kind of my bread and butter that I'm always going to keep in there. And in my CAM program, I keep those tools kind of listed as my tool crib, so to speak. Um, one of the things I found, too is you see this right here that little plunger uh one of the best things that you can do if you have one of these mills is take this and hit that from time to time uh i've had the tool changer screw up on me because coolant will get in there and it will kind of gum up so um getting some WD-40 with that little plunger and what I'll do a lot of times when I first turn this thing on is I'll go in here spray that with WD-40 and kind of work it back and forth and you'll feel if this is not quite right so you'll feel it kind of gum up and not want to go in there but what ends up happening is that's on a like a timer so when that comes in it's looking for that switch and if it doesn't see it everything stops so then you have to go through the tool changer restore button and you eventually get it right but that is most of the time that's been the problem that i've had so a little bit of wd-40 on that goes a long way makes life better so i'm gonna quit while i'm ahead tonight everything looks beautiful i'm tickled to death with the way that turned out so, um, close this, and this is what I usually do, power up, it runs that to there, which it was already there, turn her off, and turn this off, oh, wrong button. so, and this is what I'm running this on, by the way, uh, it's a three-phase machine. That's a 10 horsepower three phase motor that I bought for 150 bucks at the scrapyard. Um, this was 300 and something bucks on eBay. Um, and this is the guy's name. I would highly recommend these guys. The guy was very friendly, very helpful. I did add this little thing here. This tells you your load. Here, I'll turn it on so you can see it. So this just tells me um, the current. So right now, just spinning, I'm pulling 6.5 amps. And when I'm running that machine, I might pull 8, 9, 10 amps in all reality. That machine, coolant pump, running the spindle, running the tables, uh, this will end up going to, you know, 10 amps maybe. Now when I'm running this thing, she likes the juice. Uh, it'll be 15, 20 amps. Uh, but that's still well within what this circuit can hold. I've got six gauge wire coming down here, um, going back up to here. So it can handle that very easily. Uh, but yeah, that just gives me an idea of what I've got. That was not very expensive. And I've just got it on one of the three legs. So it's got a little clampy thing that goes on your legs that tells you what you're looking at 
mm -hmm. and it just gets turned off. I think there was a 110 and I just ran that into one of the legs to power this. So when you turn this off, it turns that off and there you go. But when I was first running this machine, it would ramp up to uh, 3,500 RPM. So this motor, what's well, in there, was having to ramp up in a second from zero to 3,500 RPMs. And every time this would move, this thing would have to, every time it changed tools, it would have to do that. And what would happen is the breakers in the back would flip and I'd get it, I had it do it. And I walked over here and this thing was spiking to like 90 some odd amps. I'm not exactly sure how that works because it's on a 60 amp breaker. Um, and actually, I think it's on a fifth. I don't remember which one of these is the this thing. 20, 20. Yeah. Either oh, there you go. You can see what I'm looking at. But this is on a I think it's a 50 amp breaker. Yeah, that one right there. Uh, that's obviously no longer there. So this is powering this. I need to re-label my stuff. Uh, another thing I'm going to do eventually is probably do away with this control and put a maybe an acorn another centroid control on here and i have actually considered taking this machine <laughs> um, because it's already got ball screws here your your two axes here it's already ball screws it's already servo driven and you've got this nice big long table to be able to do stuff with the only thing it doesn't do is this. So it'll do two axis C and C, but it won't do the third axis. Um, <laughs> I've considered making a rotary axis to go on this and replacing this controller because this is like a conversational. Um, you, can, you have to do everything through here. You can't program it on a computer, which is what I much prefer over this. So take this, do away with it, put a new control on this, and s figure out a way to drive this with a servo and a ball screw. So make this a third axis. Um, and if I'm doing it, I may as well make me a rotary axis, like a dividing head type deal, and make a, uh, may even put another thing here to where you can raise and lower this. And that might be something that I could put on a servo as well. So I've got two ways to control this axis. Um, not sure, but if I do that, then that would give me another three axis mill that I could run. Um, and the only problem is the way this is set up is you can still use this without using the servos. So I can use this like a regular milling machine. Um, I've thought about trying to find like a bridge port to replace that to be my kind of regular meal and then turn this into a three axis CNC. So I could use this, I could use that, uh, run both of them, make everything work pretty well. And this is single phase. So there's a lot of stuff that I could do with this. And this also has a lot more grunt. So, you know, using, uh, something like this would not be a problem. Um, you can gear this head down way lower. So there's things that this will do better than that. And so that's, that's something I've considered, but again, this all takes time and money and both of those are in short supply. So yeah, there you go. Another update, but I am super happy that, this actually turned out so now i've got that fixed it looks like um and i can focus on my uh that thing in there that i forgot what it's called the uh, press brake so i'm actually going to take these to work with me so i can make more of them and so anyway um you guys have a wonderful day, and uh, I keep forgetting to say this, but Merry Christmas. Hope everybody's having a good one. Um, have a good day.